Hey guys, today I have something pretty cool to show you. This is an HP LaserJet 4P laser printer, and it was made in 1993. I got this at the ReStore for $10. It originally had a $20 price tag on it, but uh, I offered them $10 and uh, they said sure thing. So that was pretty cool. Some of you may know that these particular printers, uh, the LaserJet 4 series and the LaserJet 5 series, are pretty legendary printers. Um, these printers are well known for their incredible reliability and their ability to work way past what they were specified to do. Um, I personally am a huge fan of the LaserJet 4 and 5 series and I believe that without question these are the best computer printers that were ever made no questions asked. I don't think there's ever been a printer or will ever be a printer that'll live up to the uh, standards that these printers were built. Many of these printers, the LaserJet 4 and 5 series, uh, are still in use today in many businesses in fact. And as a matter of fact, uh, Microsoft still today includes LaserJet 4 and 5 series drivers in the current versions of Windows. I believe even Windows 8 has support for the LaserJet 4 and 5 printers. Now this is the LaserJet 4P which was the second to lowest end printer in the LaserJet 4 series. The lowest end was the LaserJet 4L which was for home use and uh, YouTube user V Westlife has a video of two of them if you want to see what they look like. Then there was this unit, the LaserJet 4P which was meant for uh, work groups and small businesses. Then uh, up from that was the standard LaserJet 4, which was for uh, medium-sized businesses. And then the highest-end printer was the LaserJet 4 Si, which was a huge printer uh, meant for large businesses. So we'll take a look at the printer here. This is a slot right here. This is for a font cartridge. You could, uh, back in the day, buy cartridges from HP and uh, stick it in there, and it would uh, add fonts hardware fonts into the printer. The printer itself has I believe like 40 built-in fonts that you can call up. That is if you were using this printer with say something other than an IBM compatible PC that could tell the printer to print its own fonts. Uh, like you know if you had a PC with Windows 95 with true type fonts it would just tell the printer to print its own fonts. But if you had this printer hooked up to a device that couldn't do that the printer itself has its own built-in fonts and uh, you could choose using the menu settings what font you wanted to print with which was pretty cool. Um, we've got the paper tray here which pulls out like that and uh, I've already got some used paper in there, one-sided paper. And uh, something rather interesting is you see this yellow indicator right here. What that does is if you're low on paper this drops down, it's a mechanical indicator to tell you that uh, that you need to fill up with paper soon. If there's plenty of paper, it pushes the uh, flag up there. Like if I press down on the paper tray to simulate more paper, the indicator goes up out of sight. So that's pretty interesting. Over here you have your display and the controls. It's an LCD display with a green LED backlight. You have a light to show when it's doing something. And I believe all these controls are all exactly the same as they are on the standard LaserJet 4 online, form feed, continue, enter, up or down, item, menu, and shift. If we go around the left side here, and if you lift this thing up, oh, you push it down, my mistake. But right here, you have two memory slots. You could expand the memory in this printer. Um, the printer comes, I believe, four, with four megabytes of RAM built in, and you have two slots here to expand it, I believe, up to 36 megabytes. And uh, I believe it's EDO RAM. Oh, it's got three slots. I thought it had two. However, I've tried all the EDO memory modules I do have, and none of them seem to work. So I guess it takes a different type of memory. On the right side, this is a very heavy printer. You have a button to open the lid so you can change the uh, toner cartridge and uh, clear any paper jams if you have to. There's a fan built in. You get your power switch. And around the back, you have a parallel port, a serial port, which is very nice. This knob here tells you if you want the printer to do its normal route and come out the top. 
or if you move the knob down it'll come out here instead so it doesn't have to make that final turn there is a door here that uh, you can open up and you can clear any jams here if you have to standard uh, IEC power cable connector this here is the back of the paper tray and you have all your information here all that stuff data manufacturer September 1993 it's the model number it was made in the USA from foreign and domestic components ironically the serial number starts with USB and that's about it I do have computers that uh, support parallel ports so I will be able to demonstrate this to you today I'm going to use the uh, Acer Travelmate 233LC laptop running Windows XP. They do make a, uh, there's a, a cable that a company makes, I forget the name of the company, but uh, it's a cable that uh, goes from parallel to USB. It just plugs into parallel port on the back and on the other end is a USB to plug into any modern computer. And uh, it reportedly works on these printers uh, just fine. So uh, I might grab one of them someday, I don't know. but. Uh, I've always wanted one of these printers. That's kind of a hard thing to ask for because these things, the resale value is so high, you can pay up to a couple hundred bucks for one of these in good tested working condition. So uh, I'm pretty lucky that I got this printer for only 10 bucks. And I'm especially lucky because, believe it or not, this printer works absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. And it has an extremely low page count. When you buy one of these on eBay, more often than not, the sellers know to uh, put in the description what the page count is. These things keep track of how many pages they print, and when you print out a test page, it'll tell you. Many LaserJet printers that you come across on eBay, they'll have 100,000, 200,000 pages. Um, some that have been really heavily used, they'll have as many as half a million pages. And that's one of the reasons these printers are so incredible is that they're so durable they can print you know up to half a million pages before they need any servicing done on them. This printer has an incredibly low page count of only 10,000 pages. That's nothing for one of these printers. Absolutely nothing. This printer is basically brand new still. And uh, of course physically it's in perfect shape so uh, I'm really happy I got this. Thing is though, um, I haven't really used it all that much. Actually, I haven't used it at all. I used it once to uh, print some notes for school, and uh, that was it. And the reason is, is because it has a couple of minor problems. Um, one problem, I believe, is caused by the toner cartridge and not the printer itself, and that is pages that are printed out um, have black smearing down the middle of the page. And uh, I have a sample here I can show you. This is a blank page I printed. I printed nothing at all. I just told it to spit out a page and it had these black smears on it. So uh, I cleaned the rollers and uh, there was a ton of ink on the rollers and uh, after I cleaned them and used the printer a bit there was ink on the rollers again. So I think that's the toner cartridge. This thing has a generic non-HP toner cartridge in it. So that's hopefully probably the issue. Um, another issue is is that although now for example, this page which was spit out of it doesn't exhibit that issue at all. Um, but uh, pages that come out of it are often curly. They curl from the heat. I, I doubt that was a defect in the design of the printer. Although this page which came out of it isn't curled anymore. So uh, maybe, maybe they just curl a bit from the heat and then afterwards when they cool down they uh, go back again. I haven't used this thing a lot so I haven't observed it a lot yet. But uh, we'll take a look inside here, and uh, there's the ink cartridge by a company called GRC, remanufactured, oh that's nice, whoever owned this thing cheapened out on the ink cartridge, uh, I, toner cartridge, excuse me, I, uh, I do not buy remanufactured ink cartridges anymore, mom still does, um, but I don't, I used to, I don't anymore, I've had nothing but trouble with them. So we'll haul this out. And uh, if you look, if I pull back the uh, protector here, which way does it go? Yeah, like that. You can see on the middle of the green roller there that there's some uh, ink smudges. So hopefully the smearing problem is just with this remanufactured cartridge. But uh, we can look inside here. 
and uh, looks pretty good. This rubber roller right here was the one I cleaned, and uh, yeah, it's dirty with ink again. Hopefully just from this dumb cartridge, you can see some ink. Uh, I keep saying ink, I mean toner, I know the difference. You can see the toner on the uh, gears there, and over there as well. But that's alright. Someday I'll get a, a genuine HP cartridge and uh, see how that works. So, what I'll do now is I'll uh, scrounge up a cable and uh, we'll plug this in and turn it on. Alright, we're plugged in now, so let's turn it on, flip the switch. And there it's ready. So, um, when I first got this thing, I printed all the test pages that uh, you could print on it. So instead of printing them again and wasting toner and paper, I'll just show them to you right here. Here's the uh, main test page, 600 dots per inch. Great Windows printing, and of course it's referring to Windows 3.1, of all things. It's got a RISC processor, apparently. PCL5. 40, ah, it's got 45 built-in fonts. And the RET technology was, uh, they, the RET technology, which HP referred to for many years on their printers, I believe debuted it on the LaserJet 4 series. And on this side, I printed... Ah uh, yes, this is the PCL configuration page, which basically shows the settings that are set. It's got two megabytes of built-in RAM. Page count, 10,181 as of printing this. The firmware was dated May the 5th, 1993. Does not have a font cartridge installed. Installed personalities. Oh, that's kind of freaky. And there's stuff there. 9600 baud for the serial port. I haven't tested the serial, but I imagine it works just fine. And of course, all this testing it does. Printing out all the built-in characters. So that's that page. Um, I printed, printed another one here. This one says 10,180, so I printed this out before. And you can tell on these first pages I printed out, the black smearing wasn't there. And the black smearing is here on this side of the page, so I guess it must have started after I begun using it. This is a Windows XP test page. You have installed HP LaserJet 4P on Travelmate. So there's that page. And then this page says... HP LaserJet 4P, this is the uh, list of built-in fonts. It indicates that it's a scalable font, so basically kind of like TrueType, uh, it has, it can scale it, you know, vector-based fonts, so any size and it looks fine. There's all the built-in fonts. Some of these I've never even heard of. There's another test page, 10,182. <laughs> And uh, the fonts continue here. Ah uh, yes, yeah, see this page exhibits the curling that uh, this printer seems to do. I'd like to think that that's due to the toner cartridge, but uh, I don't know. As a matter of fact, the black smearing might not even be the toner cartridge, it might be the uh, fuser. I hope it's not, but it is a possibility. I actually have a friend who has the same printer who has an empty toner cartridge that uh, he said he'd uh, lend to me so I could uh, see if the problems go away with that toner cartridge. So what I'll do is these, yes, these three pages, which I tried, and they have the black smearing going down them. I'll uh, I'll save them to use for test prints later, since they're no good for using for real print jobs anymore. But uh, we can look at the menu here. We go to menu. Oh, we got to bring it offline. 
go to menu, new printing, PCL, job menu, config parallel, serial, and test menu. Continue. Oops, no, I forget how to use this. Go to test menu. Ah, yes, item. Self test, continuous self test, maybe? I forget. So, let's do self test. Darn it, I forget how to. Hold on. Test menu, self test. There we go. Maybe this won't print out a page. Maybe it just does the thing like it does when it starts up. Ah, yes, okay. It's gonna print now. This thing uses so much power that the lights in the room flicker while it's printing. They go dim bright, dim bright. It's very freaky. This thing uses like 300 watts of power. Oh wow, the black smearing's really, really visible there. It gets worse and worse the more you print. But uh, there's what it printed. This side uh, was just something I printed before. This is all one-sided paper I'm using. 10,190. So what I'll do now is I'll dig out the travel mate and uh, we'll print some stuff from Windows. All right, I got the travel mate running here, whose uh, soldered fan connector is still holding up. And if we look right there, HP LaserJet 4P is ready. And it's online and ready to go. So let me go. Let's go into let's go into Word, Word 2003. I thought I'd never uh, upgrade from it, but I did. I'm running 2010 now, but uh, Word 2003 still works very well. And uh, let's test something here. Hello, world. And uh, let's put a piece of clip art in there. Let's uh, go insert picture clip art. And apparently the last thing I searched was coffee. Let's search for, I don't know, I feel like searching for a horse. Oh man, I know what I want for a picture. Hold on. Yes, that is perfect. Perfect. So let's uh, let's copy that and paste. Ah, there it is. And uh, ah, that's pretty good. All right, let's print. We will go print. Laser Jet 4P. And yeah, all those look good. So let us print. Every light in this room flickers when it's when this thing's printing. It's scary. All right. Oh, came out good enough. Complete with. Uh, horrible black smudging. Text looks really good. Nice and sharp. And the image? Well, it's about as good as a LaserJet 4 should get with images. Pretty nice. Now apparently you can stick envelopes in that slot there to uh, print on them. So all I've done is I've folded this page in half, which will probably result in a paper jam, but uh, let's see if that works. So I think I just stick it like that. Or maybe it's like that. Ah yes, there it goes. 
If this doesn't jam, uh, I will be surprised. Oh yeah, paper jam. Yep, um, let me try again. Maybe it should be on the far left here. Continue. Still paper jam? There's no more paper jam. Okay, that's probably our paper jam. clear again. Actually, let me take all the paper out of here so I can just try the envelope slot. Continue. And, uh, oh, now we have the infernal PC load letter. Um, if you guys don't know, PC load letter is a kind of a historical, uh, comedic thing, uh, when it comes to these printers. Of course, PC load letter, um, I don't know if they still use it on the current LaserJet printers, but uh, it debuted on the first uh, HP LaserJet, and uh, it caused frustration to no end for many people, because it makes absolutely no sense if you don't know uh, what PC is referring to. And uh, many people who got PC load letter, they had uh, absolutely no idea what the printer was trying to tell them. Um, the example on Wikipedia is that perhaps it means uh, that you're supposed to load the document you're trying to print from the PC again. But what it actually means is PC means paper cartridge, a.k.a. the paper tray. Load letter means put letter size paper in. So it's saying that the paper cartridge is out of letter. And that's what it means. Alright, let's try this again. Might actually work this time. Oh, nope, didn't think so. Oh, well, took it all the way in that time. Holy cow. Now did it actually print? Wow, it actually worked. Well, there you go, even the uh, envelope input works. Dude. Now, I mentioned about the printer having built-in fonts to use if you're on a device that doesn't support sending its own font to the printer. True type or whatever. So, uh, let's test that. So let's say I want to print something, and, oh, there's one right there, Cor Coronet, and that is font number 9. So what we do is, we go into the menu, we go to the PCL menu, and font number, so let's change that to font number 9, press enter, and bring it back online. Now, I'm in a DOS window here, and what I can do is I'll make a, a text file, so copy con, we'll call it test.txt, and I'll say this will print in Coronet, control Z. And now I'll say print test.txt and press enter. There it goes.
it's awful small, but there it is. This will print in coronet. There you go. Now I'll do one more test, and that'll be to test the uh, the auxiliary output, which makes the page come out like this. So uh, let's choose let's choose another font to print with, just for fun. Let me find the font list, which I threw away. All right here. Uh, let's choose this Greek one. That looks fun. So that is font number. 37. So. Okay. And we'll just print that same file again. And it should come out the back this time. There it is. Well, it looks pretty good. Like I said, besides the black smudging, even that uh, generic cartridge does really good. The text is really sharp. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that the problem with the black smearing is just with that cartridge. But then again, just the same, this thing is a problem with curling pages too, which uh, I'd be surprised if that's just with the uh, cartridge, but I don't know. But other than that, it does work, and it works just fine. And uh, even if only the black smudge problem was fixed, uh, this would be a pretty good printer to print my school stuff with. The only thing is, I do like color, and uh, more often than not, with my school documents, I print stuff that does have color in it. And of course, you don't have to print it in color, but uh, I do like to do that just because it makes it look nicer. But uh, for other stuff, this printer would be pretty good. So I think uh, I think this will be a keeper. Like I said, it's not often you uh, get the opportunity to come across these things, especially for such a good price anymore. So uh, I think I'll keep this, let it hang around here, and. Uh, Hopefully I can uh, find a genuine uh, toner cartridge to try with it. HP actually doesn't manufacture toner cartridges for the LaserJet 4 and 5 series anymore. But they made so many of them that uh, there are tons still in stock on many websites. And uh, you can buy new old stock ones on eBay and such. So uh, perhaps I'll uh, grab one of them to try with this thing. But uh, that's all there is to show of the HP LaserJet 4P laser printer from 1993. It's a very fine printer, like any LaserJet 4 and 5 series printer. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.